Sairam children, today we are going to discuss lesson number 13, air and water. We are going to discuss the topic water. Three quarter of earth is covered by water. Do you know children that when the astronauts see the earth from the outer space, it looks blue in color. The reason is the abundance of water found on the surface of the earth. Water is everywhere. Water is present in seas, lakes, oceans, rivers, ponds, etc. It is also present underground that is below the surface of the earth which is dug up as a form of in the form of well water. When we dig the water, we dig the well and the water which is inside that is underground water. It is also present in the air. Yes, the water that is present in the reservoirs like rivers, lakes, oceans, seas, etc. It gets heated up due to the heat of the sun. It converts into water vapor and it is present in the form of water vapor in the air. Everything on every living thing on earth depends on water. We also require water, right? And also plants when they make their own food they require water. And without water, life on earth is not possible. Water is essential for proper functioning of our body. Our blood is mostly water. The water present is present in the blood in a large quantity. Now children, that the functioning of blood, the fun blood is very important for us, right? It carries oxygen and food to all the parts of the body, digested food to all the parts of the body and it also collects waste material from different parts of the body. Now water dissolves many things. I do not, I am not saying that it dissolves everything. For example, if you try to dissolve sand in the water, the sand will not get dissolved. But in your home while making a lemonade or coffee, you must have seen that there are, uh, for example, when you are making coffee, the coffee powder, the sugar, it dissolves in the milk, right? In the same way, when you are making a lemonade, what happens in a glass of water, when you dissolve sugar, salt, it gets dissolved, right? So, the, uh, so here, the things which are required for making a lemonade, we have a liquid that is called water. We require sugar and salt. Now children, what happens when we mix the sugar and salt and lemon juice in the water? Everything gets dissolved in the water, right? So here, water becomes the solvent. What is the solvent? A liquid in which a solute dissolves is called as solvent. And the substances like sugar and salt which we dissolve in a liquid that are called as solute. And when we mix a sol solute into a solvent, we get a solution. The solution contains the properties of both the solvent and the solute. For example, when we dissolve sugar or salt in water, the water tastes sweet and salty. So, the solution of, we call it a sugar solution or a salt solution. Now, we cannot dissolve everything in the water, right? So, the substances that we can dissolve or that dissolve in water are called as soluble substances. Whereas, the substances that do not dissolve in water are called as insoluble substances. Now, children, impurities in water. These are the substances which we were trying to add. Now impurities are unwanted things. Now children, we get water in the form of rain. It, uh, we come, uh, the rain comes to the earth and we receive that water. That water gets collected in various water bodies like seas, rivers, oceans, lakes, etc. Now the, when the water falls, when it comes to the earth, what happens? While moving from, above, from the surface of the earth, 
so many impurities means unwanted things get mixed up with water for example small pebbles leaves uh, mud and so many other things and uh, when uh, we have we dispose of the waste from our homes and factories all these things get dissolved in the water now few minerals and salts are also there which gets dissolved in the water like for example some salts and minerals which are soluble they get dissolved in the water in the same way some insoluble substances like chalk mud stone they also get carried away with the water now what happens that we cannot re, uh, drink that water right can we have that water with this many impurities no so what we have to do we have to remove that impurities from the water now today we are going to discuss the method to remove soluble impurities uh, for uh, sorry today we are going to discuss the methods to remove insoluble impurities insoluble means that cannot be dissolved now there are three methods sedimentation decantation and filtration now in the method sedimentation children when the water or any liquid is kept undisturbed what happens the insoluble impurities settle down at the bottom of the uh, container in which the uh, impurities were dissolved so this method is known as sedimentation after sedimentation we get the impurities settle at the bottom of the container and clear water on the top and removing the clear water from the glass or from the container without the impurities getting dissolved in it is known as decantation now filtration means see we can filter the things filter the water usually uh now everybody is having water purifiers at home earlier the people used to filter out the impurities from water using a cotton cloth or muslin cloth so by doing that the impurities could get easily removed from the water now sedimentation means settling down of heavy insoluble particles or solids from a mixture is called sedimentation decantation is a process to separate mixture by removing a liquid layer that is free of a precipitate precipitate means the sediment or the solid deposited from the solution now filtration is a process used to separate solids from a liquid or gas using a filter medium that allows the liquid to pass through but not the solid means using a filter like we have we use the uh, we can use the cloth cotton cloth or we get many filters which we can be which can be used in the laboratory to remove out the insoluble impurity impurities to separate the insoluble impurities now this is the picture showing sedimentation the process of sedimentation in the left hand side can you see the muddy water on the right hand side the mud particles settle down at the bottom of the container and the water at the top is clear so this process is called as sedimentation now decantation means you clear uh, carefully remove the clear water from the sediment left behind in the bottom of the container so this is decantation now this is the process of filtration here filter paper is used to remove of the impurities now here can you see in the container there is muddy water a filter paper is placed in the funnel and the funnel is attached in a container and when you put the muddy water in the filter paper that filter paper separates the mud and give clear water in the container so today we discuss three methods of removing insoluble impurities from water and that are sedimentation decantation and filtration i am also going to 
show the experiments be, uh, which will explain these concepts better. I hope you enjoyed the session. Saira. Children, now we are going to perform one more experiment. We know that water dissolves many things. Now, put a teaspoon of salt in a glass of water. Stir the water with a spoon. The salt disappears. Now taste this water. Does it taste salty? Why? Where did the salt disappear? Now the salt has not disappeared. The salt that you added to the glass of water dissolved in the water. This is why the water became salty. When you taste the water, you feel it, you, it tastes salty. The salt and the water together form a solution and which is called as salt solution. The water here is called as solvent. The salt and the substances like sugar. The salt and the sugar which are dissolved in water is called the solute. Now water dissolves many substances like we have dissolved salt completely in water. So the substances that, can, that are dissolved in water are called as soluble substances whereas the substances that cannot be dissolved in water are called as insoluble substances. Children, as we know that water contains many soluble as well as insoluble impurities. Now what, does the, what is the meaning of soluble and insoluble? Soluble impurities means the impurities that can dissolve in the water whereas insoluble impurities means the impurities which cannot be dissolved in water. Now the insoluble impurities from water can be, dis uh, can be removed by three methods. Now I am going to demonstrate the three methods which can be used to remove the insoluble impurities from water. Now, for the first method which is known as sedimentation. Now children, sedimentation means settle down. Now, for this experiment we have to take a glass of water. So this is the glass of water. Put some mud in it. So I am going to put mud in the water. So now stir the water. I have done that. Now, does the water become muddy? Yes, of course you can see that the mud has dissolved in the water little bit and the water is looking muddy. Now, keep the glass undisturbed for 10 minutes. You will find that the insoluble mud particles settle down at the bottom of the glass leaving clear water on top. For this, I have already kept a glass undisturbed and can you see children here, the mud particles settle down at the bottom of the glass and on the top, can you see clear water. So, the mud that settled down is known as sediments. Can you see at the bottom of the glass, this mud which has settled down, these, this is called as sediment and this method can remove heavier insoluble impurities from water. It is called sedimentation. Now what we have to do, we, now we are going to move ahead with the new uh, next method that is decantation. For that what you have to do, you have to carefully pour out the clear water into another glass. The sediment is left behind. This process is known as decantation. For this we will need another glass and carefully we have to pour the clear water into another glass leaving the sediments behind 
in the glass. Now, can you see children, the water in this glass is quite clear. So, this method in which you carefully pour out the clear water leaving the sediments behind is known as decantation. Now, we can use another method which is known as filtration. Now, filtration means children you require a filter to filter out the, the mud from the water. Now, take muddy water in a glass which we already have. Pour it into another glass through a piece of cotton cloth. Now, what I am going to do, I have taken another glass and I have taken a piece of cotton cloth. And I am going to pour this muddy water into this glass through the filter. Now, can you see the mud particles on the cloth? The cloth hold back most of the mud, giving you clear, cleaner water. Now, take a look at this water. Yes, this water is cleaner. This is because the holes in the cloth are small and bigger mud particles cannot pass through them. In laboratories, we have got so many filter papers which can be used to filter out water. Now, a filter paper has tiny holes in it. They are so small that you cannot even see through them. It can be used to filter out the mud to get water free from insoluble impurities.